Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's exercise, we're going to do problem 15 on the 056.5 final review package. And here we're dealing with complex fractions. So here we have a series of four problems in which every problem is a complex fraction. Now to do complex fractions, we have to do a few things. For one thing, we have to find the LCD of the fractions and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the LCD to eliminate all complex fractions. So let's keep that in mind. So here let's take problem number one and we'll solve it. So here we have 1 plus 1 over x minus 3 over 1 minus 2 over x minus 3. And looking at the numerator and the denominator, as in the whole top term and the whole bottom term, I see that there are fractions in each case. The denominator has x minus 3 as one of the terms denominators and so does the numerator. Now, being that they both have the same denominator in their complex fraction series, we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by one common value, and that's going to be the LCD of the little fractions here. So we're going to multiply the bottom and the top here by just x minus 3. Now, when distributing x minus 3 to the first term, we get 1 times x minus 3, which is simply x minus 3. The following term is going to be 1 over x minus 3 times x minus 3. And these are the same. So they're going to perfectly reduce and we're just going to be left over with the numerator here. So we're going to have a plus symbol and a 1 as a result. In the denominator we also have a 1 times a x minus 3 so we get x minus 3 out of that. And we have a negative symbol. And we have 2 over x minus 3 times a x minus 3 and these also reduce to 1 leaving us with just the two left over, all right? So now our task is to simply simplify what's left over, and in the numerator we have x minus 3 plus 1. This becomes x minus 2. In the denominator we have x minus 3 minus 2, which becomes x minus 5. And that's our solution for the first problem. So here we'll just write the solution, x minus 2 over x minus 5. And here what we're really doing is just simplifying the fraction and getting rid of all the complex fractions. So in other words, we want a fraction without fractions inside of that fraction, all right, if that makes any sense. All right, so here we see we have just a simplified fraction without any complex components. And that is how we get our solutions to these problems. Let's move on to the next one. Now remember, if you're watching this video and you want to stop and rewind it, feel free because the luxury is you can do that with the YouTube video all the time. So here we have a plus b for problem number two. And we have one over b plus one over a. Now again, we're looking at the complex fractions in here. We're looking at every denominator and every complex fraction. So being that the whole thing's a fraction, we're looking at the little fractions and we notice the denominators. Here we have a b and here we have an a. So the LCD of all the complex fractions in this case would be a times b, right? So the LCD of the, the denominator's fractions are a and b. So we're going to multiply the top by a, b, and we're also going to multiply the bottom by a, b. Now a lot of people often ask me, why is this uh, a legal thing to do mathematically? Well, the reason is a, b over a, b is equivalent to 1. So technically I'm not changing anything as far as the problem's concerned. All I'm doing is getting rid of the fractions that are complex in the fraction itself, all right? So let's distribute this a, b to the numerator and we see that the best form for this numerator is just to keep it factored, right? So we'll have a, b times a plus b. In the denominator here, we're gonna have a, b times one over b. Now in a, b times one over b, when we multiply these, we know this is a, b over one and we're multiplying by one over b and the b's reduce and we're just left with a. So the first term here is going to be an a. The second term will be a b times 1 over a. And again, a b goes over 1, and we're multiplying by 1 over a, and the a's go away. So we're just left with b times 1, which just gives us b like this gives us a, right? Because b divided by 1 is b, and b times 1 is b. So the second term here would be plus b. Now if you notice, since I kept the top factor and I didn't distribute, and there's good reason for this, this is already the simplified form. It's in the factored form. Notice that when I get to this step, a plus b is common in both the numerator and denominator. And because they're multiplying here, 
I could reduce these two. They don't cancel out. They reduce to one because AB, A plus B divided by A plus B is just one. Our solution here is just AB. And that's our answer for problem number two. Let's move on to the third problem here, right? And as we see, the trick to doing these complex fractions is just multiplying the top and bottom of your fraction by the LCD of the complex fractions inside of the fraction itself. So let's move on to this one then. Let's see if it's a little bit more complex than the last two have been, because they've been looking a little bit easy with this method, right? So here we have a 2x over x plus 3 minus 4 over x minus 3. Now this one is a bit more complex because you know what? We have more than just two fractions in this problem. We have one complex fraction, two, and three inside of this one fraction. So our, our task is to look at every denominator of every little fraction and make an LCD out of those denominators. And we see that to make the easiest LCD out of this, it's going to have an x minus 3 times an x plus 3 because the LCD has at least one term of every denominator. These two are the same and these two are different. So these two are different from this one. And the LCD is actually each denominator independently. So my LCD is going to be x minus 3, x plus 3. All right? So we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by this term. So here we have x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 3. So the first multiplication, we multiply 1 times everything here, and we get exactly that. Here I'm going to write this one entirely out so that everybody watching this can see how it's correctly done. And then we distribute this to everything here. So we have plus 4 over x minus 3 times x minus 3, x plus 3. Everything is divided by 2x over x plus 3 times x minus 3, x plus 3, and this is minus 4 over x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 3. So let's go reducing what we can. We have x minus 3 here. It goes away with the x minus 3. Again, down here we have x minus 3 with the x minus 3, and here we have the x plus 3 going with the x plus 3. So let's write what we have left over. And here we have x minus 3 with x plus 3. This is the difference of two squares, right? So we have x squared minus 9. Actually, let's not even evaluate that. Let me bring it down so you guys at home don't get confused, right? So we have x minus 3, x plus 3, plus 4 times x plus 3. Ah, there's actually an even easier way to complete this. Good thing I stopped myself from going too fast on this. So here on the bottom we have 2x x minus 3 minus 4 x plus 3 and the reason why I'm happy I stopped myself is because there's a common factor in the numerator so factoring this would be even easier than I thought so here we can factor this x plus 3 out of both terms because they're multiplying with 4 and x minus 3 so we're gonna have x plus 3 factored out and these two terms are gonna go into the parentheses together now so we're gonna have x minus 3 plus 4 and the other set of parentheses. In our denominator here, there's nothing we can factor out. So we're just going to have to distribute this and hope to simplify it after. So here we have 2x squared minus 6x's. Here we have negative 4x's and negative 12. So up top, this simplifies right here. We get x plus 3 times x plus 1 over 2x squared minus 10x's minus 12. And now we see there's a common factor in the denominator. So let's simplify that a little further, right? We'll start working upwards. So I'm going to go in red, and I'll come down for the rest of this problem. So we'll just divide this. So we have x plus 3 times x plus 1. And then we have this. We're going to factor out the common factor, which is 2. And what we have left is x squared minus 5x's minus 6. 
and we can see the factors to this already. This gets a lot easier from right here because we're looking to factor the denominator, right? So we have x plus 3, x plus 1. We have the 2 outside. And we know the two sets of parentheses are going to be easy to make because the last term is negative. The middle term is also negative. So we have an x, an x. Both signs are different because the third sign is negative. So 1 is plus, 1 is minus. And the factors are 6 that add up to 5. They have a difference of 5, but they multiply to make 6. 6 times 1 makes 6, and they have a difference of 5, right? So the larger number gets the negative because the middle term is negative. So we'll make negative 6 here, positive 1 here. And as we see, there's a common factor. It's x plus 1. We'll just slightly remove that. That reduces to 1. We're left with x plus 3 over 2 times x minus 6. And that's the solution for this problem here. So let's write the result here. x plus 3 over 2, parentheses x minus 6. Let's move on to our final question now. That one was a bit challenging. Hopefully the next one is a lot friendlier, right? And again, we'll be using the LCD trick, as we like to call it, to reduce these complex fractions in an instant, right? So here we have 1 over 2x's minus 1 over 5 divided by 1 over 4x squared minus 1 over 25. And this one's a little bit challenging because we see every denominator, comp it, it plays an integral role in what the LCD is. But the LCD is a singular term. So we know the LCD of 2x, 5, 4x squared, and 25 has to be a number that's divisible or a term that's divisible by each of these collectively. So the LCD would be part of the prime factorization technique. And to make a term that they all have, where 25 is not a factor of 4, so we know 100 would be part of the LCD, but we also need the x squared. So this becomes 100x squared. I would like to explain how we get there, right? So what we do is we take every component of the LCD, the 2x's, the 5, the 4x squared, and the 25. And what we do is we prime factorize each term. 2x's are already primed out, so we know this is just 2x's. 5 is already a prime number. This is just 5 to the first power. Each of these have the power of 1. But 4 is not a prime number, but it's also 2 squared, and the x is already squared. 25 is actually 5 squared. So the rule for the prime factorization to make the LCD the least common multiple is to take each base that's available from every denominator. And the only available terms we have is 2, 5, and x. So we take the 2, the 5, and the x. And then we take the largest exponent that corresponds to each of these denominators. So the largest exponent for the value of, of 2 is the 2 squared. So this is part of the LCD. The largest exponent for the 5 is 5, 1, and 5, 2. This is the, five, the highest, so we put the, the 5 to the second power. And we also have two x's. One has a 1, the other has a second power. So we take the second power to create this LCD. Now this is 4, this is 25, and this is x squared. When we multiply them all together, we get 100x squared. And that's how I computed the LCD, for those of you who are wondering. The rest of this is just the magic of using the LCD trick. So we've been multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by 100x squared. So let's get to that step then. We multiply the top by 100x squared. We multiply the bottom by 100x squared. Let's get our distributions in order and get this work pumping, all right? So here we have 100x squared multiplying by 1 over 2x's minus 100x squared times 1 over 5 divided by 100x squared times 1 over 4x squared minus 100x squared times 1 over 25. Let's simplify this and get to work. So here we have, right, the common factor here, the 100 divided by 2 is 50. So let's write the 50 first. x squared divided by x gives us an x. And the 1 just comes along for the trip, minus 100x squared divided by 5. Now notice, when I'm doing this, I'm dividing before I multiply for a specific reason. Division takes precedence over multiplication. 
in mostly every case when we talk about mathematics. It's not spoken of enough. However, we're dividing this first because it's easier to divide a number before multiplying. So here, 100x squared divided by 5 becomes 20x squared. The multiplier is still 1. The numerator just comes along for the trip. Now the denominator here, 100x squared divided by 4x squared. 100 divided by 4 is 25. x squared divided by x squared is 1. That goes away. And the numerator comes along for the trip. And then we have the final division here. 100x squared divided by 25. That creates 4. 100 divided by 25 is 4. The x squared goes nowhere. And we're still multiplying this by the numerator of 1. Let's simplify what we have then. Here we're multiplying everything times 1, times 1, times 1, times 1 here, right? So we have 50x's minus 20x squared. Everything here is divided by 25 minus 4x squared. Now we can factor the numerator and the denominator. What's the greatest common factor up top? The greatest common factor is, we see these zeros, that's an indication they both have factors of 10. So we'll factor out the 10. They also have variables in common. So when doing the greatest common factor, we take the smallest power available between the two variables. Here there's a 2, here there's a 1. So we'll factor out just x. Let's leave what remains. When we divide 50x's with 10x's, we get 5. When we divide negative 20x to the second power, we get negative 2x. And that's being divided by... And in the bottom here, we have the difference of two squares. We know it's a difference of two squares because 25 is a perfect square. And 4x squared is also a perfect square. So we're going to open up the difference of two squares function where 1 is plus, 1 is minus. The square root of 25 is 5, so this becomes 5 and 5. The square root of 4x squared is 2x's. So we put 2x here and 2x there. Now, we also see that these have common factors, and we're just going to remove them, right? These two will go away. And there we have our final answer of 10x's divided by 5 plus 2x's. So let's write that down here. 10x's over 5 plus 2x's. All right? Thank you.